Devon, thoughts on this? Simon Michel from Fig now joining the show. Is it all kind of a done deal, Simon? Welcome to you uh, for the Fed this week. G'day, Carson. Look, very, looking very much that way, absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, the difference we're seeing now is uh, yields position themselves in preparation for that tightening. Mm -hmm. uh, futures very much uh, a done deal uh, as well, 100% chance. So I think uh, now it gets to uh, what happens after this, uh, this increase. How many uh, increases will we see from the Fed this year? Mm. And are you, as a house, minded to change that projection based on everything so far this year or you're saying let's just see how this first one runs and then we'll uh, you know perhaps re recast our calls look I think so absolutely because if you have a look at the longer end of the yield curve cast if you have a look at the 10 year you have a look at the 30 year we're still off of last year's highs so you know while you've seen the short end of the curve you've seen that two year as you mentioned drift up closer uh, in anticipation of these high rates we're not really seeing that adjusted in the 10 and the 30 and that's really where you see uh, you know their proxy for, for growth and inflation and I think that's because you're really still seeing, uh, you know, growth forecasts, you know, still fairly, fairly moderate. Uh, inflation has drifted up a little bit, but, uh, you know, the bond market is certainly not on board with this huge infrastructure spending and, you know, 4 or 5% growth forecasts that we're seeing out there. Mm -hmm. The question is, and Westpac asked this in its, its weekly kind of look ahead, you know, what is the Fed's view on neutral rates and mm -hmm. why is that important for Australia? So mm -hmm. just sort of tr try and... Uh, thread the needle, if you could, on that one. Well, this is interesting. I mean, you know, it's, it's about looking at uh, this succession of rates. You know, how many interest rate increases are we going to get? Mm -hmm. Considering that they are based on, obviously, you know, grow growing inflation, uh, growing growth, uh, and a solid uh, performing economy. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people are saying, you know, if, if inflation and growth are going to remain low globally, and we certainly suggest that is the case, then the ability for the Fed to continue to in raise in interest rates is inhibited uh, by those low forecasts. And what you're likely to see is a bit of an inverse uh, of the yield curve where you actually see short-term rates higher than longer-term rates mm. and that reflects obviously you know negative growth slowing growth recession mm. it's interesting you, you do under yourself is the Australian economy in that scenario even say at a 1% neutral rate down from three in the 1980s are we resilient enough to see out the cycle well, I mean, it's really interesting. I mean, you know, there are certainly some concerns in the Australian economy. And we saw a negative uh, quarter of growth, um, you know, two quarters ago. Mm. Um, you know, it's, you know, it, it is really, uh, you know, on a bit of a precipice, I suppose. You know, you've got a lot of commentators out there, major banks suggesting we'll see a cash rate as low as 1% this year. Uh, others suggesting we won't need a further cut. Uh, you know, the, the US Fed moving their rates higher does do a bit of that work for the Reserve Bank because it, 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 it makes the, the US rates much more attractive than Aussie rates and uh, you know then you start to see a bit of pressure off the dollar the dollar drifts a little bit lower that's positive for our manufacturing export market so you know the US Fed um, if we do get sort of three four interest rate the increases would probably take a bit of pressure off the need for the RBA to lower rates but they have some real concerns in our domestic economy as you mentioned. Mm, indeed they do so uh, speaking of which we do get a jobs print ourselves this week. Is that composition, I suppose now more than ever, to your point, the composition matters a lot and we perhaps would be more buoyed up if we did see a pivot back into full time? Well, absolutely. And I mean, you know, employment's, you know, it's not looking too bad. Rates around 5.7%. We're not expecting a huge change to that. But we do have a real problem with the change in the underlying structure of our uh, workforce. And uh, you hear a lot uh, of talk around underemployment, where, you know, people might have a job. They might have two jobs, but they're not working as much as they would need to or would like to. Um, so, you know, people are looking at that transition from full to part time, the underlying impact of that, seasonal factors as well. I don't think it's going to be a key driver at the moment. Um, I looked at the four cast they're pretty much status quo. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Harley Davidson. Yes, uh, interesting. You right. tend to need a salary to to go well, well maybe you don't maybe you can do it all on higher purchase these days to uh, to nab a Harley right? Well, don't, I don't, don't not like that. It's, it's like you're speaking from experience. <laughs> anyway go on Simon. Go on. That's right. Well, this is really interesting because we've seen a lot of uh, US issuers and uh, non-US issuers using the Australian bond market. And I think it's a real factor of the development and maturing of the Australian bond market, greater uh, number of investors here. Uh, we've seen Coca-Cola, we've seen Apple issue bonds in Australia in Australian dollars. Harley-Davidson, the next uh, 
big one as well. They've never issued outside the US. Uh, so I tell you what, you know, if you're a big supporter of this company, they've been around since 1902, I think it is. Uh, you know, time to jump on. You can lock in some good funding and support Harley Davidson. Because they've only raised US dollar funds to date. Up, up to this point, yeah, never used uh, any offshore markets at this point. This will uh, be their first uh, look outside of uh, the US. They're looking at Aussie and Singapore, but, uh, you know, I think it just, again, uh, we're seeing a succession of, uh, of what we call kangaroo bond issuances, which are basically non-Aussie companies issuing Aussie mm. dollar bonds into Australia, gr providing great uh, source of diversification, sector diversification for Aussie investors. OK, we must roar on... Uh to, to adopt the lexicon or something like that until I'm not a driver, can you? <laughs> I don't parties. drive a motorbike either. All right. We'll talk to you soon, all right? Thank you. Uh, thanks, Carson. Bye-bye. Simon Michel there from FEG. We must take a...